Vlog time, people. <coughs> Carp fishing again. Um, it's Saturday. Uh, it's about half seven, quarter to eight at night. I got up this morning at three o'clock, travelled to Attenborough Nature Reserve. Um, I sat up, a couple of hours got set up, got all my cooking gear set up in the bivet, nets out, rods sorted, just about to start markering up. <coughs> and this bloke come along with his lad and dog. And I got talking to him and he says to me, he says, you're wasting your time on here, mate. He says, you might get some of the smaller carp. He says, but the big carp, very, it's not very often they get caught on here. He says, I've tried and tried and tried. He says, a lot of people have. He, said, some, he says, I know somebody that's fished for two months solid on here without getting a carp. I thought, oh, brilliant. He says, I'll tell you where to go. He says, I know somewhere to go. He says, where there's some good carp. He says, carp up to 30-odd pound. He says, you don't have to fish very far out for them either. Um, so he told me where it is, but I can't say where it is. It's secret. People might know by the footage. Um, so I packed up. Took me about two hours to pack down again. Loaded the van up, and then it took me about an hour or so to get here. And the track to it was a nightmare. And it's tucked away though, right in the middle of nowhere. But you can see, it is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. And I mean beautiful, so peaceful. And I've seen fish. Um, I've seen quite a few fish actually. I have um, showing when I got here. Um, I've seen fish showing off of the corner of here. And then if I come down here, I've got to watch what I'm doing because it's all on a slope. And I've seen fish showing off the corner of here as well. Um, I've already had a big bream. I had a big bream, about a £10 bream. And also I've seen carp over there. I've seen one biggish one over there. So I've seen fish there, there and over here. So I'm pleased. At least I know there's fish in the area. But where I'm fishing is really, really tight. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'll just show you my van's in there. And you've got a really tight track. I've only just got my sticks in there. It's really tight. Tight at the back, but it's on a slope. So I've just managed to get the bivvy in. I've got the umbrella up to give me some shake because it's been absolutely stifling. It has. I managed to get the bivvy up but it's been roasting the bivvy without the overwrap on. I just haven't got the room to get the overwrap on. And like I say, as soon as I come out the bivvy door, it like slopes down and then down and then down into where my rods are. So I've got to be really careful. Else otherwise I'll end up going arse over tit. But it's a lovely little spot, it's a lovely peg. I don't know how many days I'm going to do it yet. But I might end up getting a big one out of here. I've seen them, so I know they're here. So, fingers crossed, people. But I'll show you. Right. Around here. So I've got the pod in tight down there. And like I say, what I've done is I've put a stick in the ground there, a pole, so I can grab onto it and get into the water in my waders. But my right hand rod, I've put a pole in the water and I've got my line going around the pole and I'm fishing a spot out here. It's only two and a half wraps out and it's in that, it's in nine foot water and it's a clean bottom and then as you come this way it goes a bit more saltier and then the same the other way and there's like a clear a bit here. So I'm fishing the clear a bit. And what I've done is I've put about for about 10 spoms are uh, sorry not spoms the new nash um the new nash spom dot or whatever it's called um and then i put a couple of handful of boilers and then my right hand rod let me come round here without falling over and come down here uh, sorry my left hand rod is off the corner here 
and this comes into like a bay here and then it goes round the corner it's like a channel around there um, and I've got a rigging over here um, and I've put about five or six spoms out and I've put a good three handfuls of boilers but I've catapulted them all around this area and then my third rod which is right the way over the other side what I did was I put a lead on uh, just on my other rod and cast it out to find some clearer spots and I found some clear over the margin over the other side but if you come this way there's a massive weed bed so I don't know how far it is I think I'm about 85 yards or something 90 yards um, so what I've done over there is just put a bag out and that's it left it I was going to put some spam over there but I thought no I'm not I'm just going to leave the bag out of there so I'm fishing a tight line on the middle rod I've got a drop on the left rod, a drop on the right rod so all the leader and a bit of the line is down behind the rods and I'm fishing locked up on them two rods um, and then I'm, and the middle rod's got a little tiny bit of give in it but not a lot um, because obviously I don't want them running into this lot and I don't want them getting into this lot and I don't want them getting into that over there so I really am going to have to be on my rods but I'm alright because I'm dead close really really close I've got loads of room in the bivet the way it's sat up tons of room and there's the fishing dog conked out it's been that hot for her today um, I'm just thankful that I've got this umbrella without this umbrella today I want to survive there's a fish showing again now just here you just see this after swirl I don't think the camera's picking it up. So, oh, saying that, there's a grebe just come up over there, so it could have been the grebe. But I'm confident. Like I said, I've already had a bream. I've had a bream of about ten pound. So, but I've had some it's to eat. Not long ago, I had um, a stir fry chicken with peppers and onions and mushrooms, chunks of chicken and then some curry sauce what went over the top and it was delicious, I washed that down with a can of Stella and then the old fishing dog she's had uh, some biscuits and a tin of fish so but I am absolutely knackered I mean tomorrow I'll run through my spod, spod mix and run through what rigs have been using or whatever go into a bit more detail but I'm going to side off for now just sort of give a bit of an introduction but I, I've got a good feeling about this place some of the photos what the lad showed me he, he's had quite a few 30s out of it and over 30s absolutely stunning fish gorgeous fish nice mirrors linears as well some of them so but I've got all the disturbance out of the way, I've got my rigs in, that's it, I can't do no tells. I've washed my pots, so now <coughs> I'm just having another Stella, go on my pipe, and then that's it, watch the water, I'm getting early night, because I'm absolutely shattered. So I'll sign off for now, people. Adios. Top of the morning to you, people. Um, it's about 20 past seven in the morning. I've been up now since about five o'clock. Uh, half five. No carp. Plenty of fish about last night. Um, I had a pick up off of this right hand rod, which I think was a bream. There was something on lifted into it, and then it was gone. And my left hand rod. Oh, hold on a minute. I'll just show you. 
And then my left hand rod down there, I picked another bream up. But they've been fizzing all morning over this spot. And I've had a liner on that as well, nothing on my middle rod. But there's been fish just absolutely everywhere. There's been fizzing all over the place. I think most of it's bream. There's some big, big shoals of bream in here. But um, I think what I'm going to do is is uh, switch my leads because I've got three ounce leads on. I'm going to switch them down to like two ounce leads or ounce and a half leads for me casting out. Um, I'm going to keep the same rigs on. Bait wise I've been using two signature wafters, a yellow one and a white one on my right hand rod. My middle rod that's got the bag on, I've got a piece of plastic, plastic corder, cum, corder dumbbell plastic bait on. Um, and on my left hand rod, I've got a Crave, no sorry, Squid and Spice Boiler topped with a garlic and her uh, Nash Instant Action Boiler, garlic, herb, liver, and liver, sorry. Um, I think it's just a case of just picking one up when they're coming in these margins. They seem to be in there, in and out all the time, constantly. I mean, it's fizzing out there again now. Right out here. Again, just past where my spot is. But it just seems to be fizzing absolutely everywhere. There's a hell of a lot of fish. Everywhere you seem to look. But, but, but like I say, my areas have been fizzing like mad this morning, so... I shall leave my rods in till about 11 o'clock and I shall take them out and redo them and I need to sit and tie some rigs up and have a bit of a tidy up. I've had a, sat, bake, a sausage sandwich this morning, an egg sandwich, a couple of cups of coffee, I've got another cup of coffee here now. I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up and take the rods out and take the dog for a walk and then come back and uh, get myself a bit more organised. So I'm going to sign off for now, people, and then later on I shall uh, show you my spot mix. Uh, or if I don't show you that later, I'll show you when I make another one tomorrow, because I only made so, so much up, I didn't want to overdo it. But I'm going to put some more spot out, I'm going to put my rods back out, and see whether or not the bream still come in with, because I've got pigeon conditioner in that in my spot mix. And if they still keeps bringing the bream, I'll have to do away with that and spod uh, and just put boily out. I think but we'll see first, see what happens later. But I'll get back to the bit, people. Tight lines for now. Now then, people, just thought I'd give you a bit of an update. It's Sunday night. It's about half past seven. Um, it's been a really, really hot day today. Absolutely roasting. Um, Fish-wise, I'll just let you have a look. I'll show you. I've seen a couple of carp today. The area that I'm fishing, just here, where I've got my rig. I've got the same rig on, fishing the same area. I've seen two or three carp today go in there and in the reeds this is like a channel behind the back of here and I've seen uh, two go in that way and I've seen one come across here and down here and over the top of the other area where I'm fishing and then along there plus I've seen a ghosty out here today and also a bigger carp has lumped out a couple of times around there not far from where I'm fishing um, as you can see my middle rod I've took my middle rod out it's just in the way because at the end of the day I was fishing it across there and it's what 100 yards well I was at about 90 yards it's between about 90 100 if I fish right up tight to the side it's about 110 and I've got to fish a tight line you see well, it's in the way if I get a fish on here or on this rod 
it's going to be in the way. So what I've done is I've took it out and uh, I've left a bag on that rod. I've got a leader on there as well and that's just got a, a solid bag with two and a half ounce lead in it. And I've got a KD rig inside there with one of them corded dumbbells. I, I tend to use plastic most of the time in my bags. <laughs> um, and the reason I do is because I like to make my bags up before. Um, so if I have a load of bags made up on leaders, I prefer to use plastic because if you use pop-ups, wafters, they seem to lose the buoyancy or gain buoyancy when they're stuck in bags with inside a bait tub and they act differently. So I tend to use plastic. If I'm doing there and then on, that, on the day, I'll use little wafters. There's a carp showing just again now over that area on that point again so they started to move back in down this margin they're up and down these margins all the time the bloke that told me to fish here was exactly right he said it's like they come across here and they go in there into that channel and then they work come back out and they're round here and they cross this point all the time don't get me wrong i've seen a hell of a lot of fish everywhere right? middle three quarters of the way across but most of them seem to be bream but all the carp that i've seen and the bigger carp are all down the edges down here or right the way across the other side along that margin because your margins around the edges are only uh, I've come in a little bit on this rod not a lot just a little bit and it's in about six foot of water there where I was in about seven and a half eight foot before so I've bought it this way slightly and what I've done is I've put um, about another 10-12 spawns out there I haven't like cast the spawns right out, I've just walked up to the pole, clipped my spawn up to the distance and then just like flicked it out and lowered it on the spot if you get what I mean. Um, so I've put about 10, 12 over there and then this I haven't put any spawn in today, I've just put boilers. I've spread about 80 boilers all the way around this corner and along here and along here and I've put more in the area than fishing tighter. Which normally works, I normally find that works. But we shall see. But the rods have been on the dance floor for, oh, I don't know, the rods have been in since 4 o'clock. I took them out this morning, like I said. Um, got them back in about 11, no, about half 11. I took them out about 3 o'clock, rested the swim for about an hour and a half. And then got everything back in again. So I should just sit on them now, till tomorrow morning, till 10, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, half 10, 11 see what happens and then like I say this rod I'm going to keep in case I see a bigger carp showing somewhere out there and I'll cast to it in the daytime I'll not bother at night time because it'll just be in the way so uh, so yeah it has been absolutely toasting um, spod mix I was going to show you but um, I haven't had to do another one yet. I've finished using up that bit what I've had, so I'll do one tomorrow, and then I'll uh, I'll show you. There is something I wanted to show you, people. Let me just grab my keys. Just bear with me. I just want my van keys. There's a fishing dog there. Say hello to the audience. Yeah, she's just got on there. Oh, there she is. Look. There's the old fishing dog. She's got a nice full belly. She has. You stay there. But the water has gone flat calm now. Flat calm, but there's been a wind blowing down and into here all day, a breeze. So I'm hoping that breeze comes back and blows into here. But I think I'm in the best spots. I mean, there seems to be a hell of a lot more fish. When I've been for a couple of walks today with the dog, and I've took the rods out of the water. There seems to be a hell of a lot more fish in the area that I'm fishing than there does anywhere else. Um, so, right, just have to bear with me one second, people. I'm just trying to get something to show you. There it is. Right, this is what I wanted to show you. Everybody's always moaning about getting bit 
and what to use, what not to use. Um, well, I was watching the Obsessive Carper last night and he was on about Avon. He was on about Avon skin so soft. Well, that's the cream version. They also do a spray version. And this is the spray version. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. In fact, let me just turn it round so that I can look myself and see. And I know you're definitely picking it up, lad. There we go, skin soft. And it's a dry oil spray. But I believe it contains the same as what the cream does. Um, I've never used the cream, but I was getting bit to pieces and everything I was trying just weren't working. And then I, I heard the obsessive carper and somebody else, I can't remember if it was Leon or somebody like that, on about this Avon stuff. So I asked my sister to get me some, but my sister says, well, they do a spray as well. She says, why don't you try the spray? So I got the spray and it works 100%. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant it is. Um, and the thing I like about it is the fact that you can, because uh, I coat myself first thing in the morning when I get up, five, half, four, top straight off and cover myself in suntan lotion really thick all over myself and I give that five minutes to soak in and then I spray that all over straight over the top and I spray all my arms top off down my back everything and that that sorts me out right the way through till like this time of the day again and then I do the same thing again I, I put um, after sun on coat myself in that and then spray that on and the thing that I like about the spray is, I'll just show it you again so you can see it, and it goes ever such of a long way, is the fact that you can put your suntan lotion on, or your after sun, and spray this over the top, and it still works. Whereas, I don't know about the actual cream on the one that Darren was on about, whether that works straight over the top of suntan lotion. I'm not sure, but this stuff, I swear by it, I love it. It's brilliant, and it's not expensive. It's not dear to buy at all. So there's my little tip, people, for you. Honestly, it's absolutely shit-hot stuff. It is one of the best little buys. I think it's about three quid or something. Something daft like that. I know it's not expensive, um, but well worth it. Because there is nothing worse than getting, getting bit and bit and bit. And then when it's cooled down you think, oh yeah, that's alright, but it don't. It aggravates you all night then. The bites do. So, anyway. That's my little tip. Um, I've moved my net over to this side as well. I think I can get to it easier that side um, but that's about it, I haven't really got much else to tell you and um, it looks amazing out there look it just wants to do with a bit of breeze on the water because it's still very very warm and humid but the fish are just starting to show themselves now, the roach they are I don't think it'll be long before this bay's got carp in it and I just hope it's carp and not bream that I get tonight. Them two bream what I had a big bream there. They were. I've got the same rigs on. Um, about seven inches of ESP tungsten loaded. A bit stripped back before the hook to give it a bit of a hinge. And then I've got uh, a bit of putte halfway down. Figure of eight loop uh, with a bit of silicone sleeve over my quick link. Rig what I showed you on one of my other videos the other week. Um, and then bait wise, I think the right hand rod I've got, uh, just trying to think now, I've got a squid and spice boiler topped with uh, a Crave dumbbell, 12mm dumbbell on the top. And then my left hand rod, that's got a uh, Crave bottom bait boiler. And on the top it's got a Nash garlic liver. Um, 12 mil pop up on. So, but, uh, 
Yeah, it just looks beautiful out there. Absolutely beautiful. It does. But I'm going to sign off for now because I want to sit down, have a beer, kick back and relax and watch the water properly. Oh, I'm away. I'm away. Got to go. Yeah, like I say, people, I was away then. I think it might have been a bream. It's picked me up and uh, got rid of the rig. It was running with it. So I think it was a bream. But anyway, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to, what's the name, I'm going to sign off for now and get this rig back out, get it back into the water. So I'll sign off for now and then you'll not hear off of me until tomorrow morning unless I have a fish. But it's looking good. So on with my waders and rig back in the water. So tight lines for now people. Right, blog time people, got one, half six this morning, it's an old English common, it's not massive, um, I've got to take the weight of the sling off, yeah I think it's about 14 and a half pound, but it fought like an absolute demon, and it's going to kick off big time because it's been kicking off all the time in the net, it's been a nightmare, but I'm going to try and get it on camera as quick as I can and then I'm going to get the fish back, because like I say, <laughs> It's, uh, it's going nuts. I don't really think, don't really think it's going to be any easy way of getting this to settle down. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I can because it has gone berserk like it is doing now. All the time in the flotation sling. So, with it being warm, I want to get it photographed and get it back. Now I've got, got the bloody stock, that's it. It's a lovely fish, and give me a right battle. A massive battle. I thought it was bigger, it looks bigger as well. got markings on one side of it. It's got lovely orange there. To its uh, tail. Mouth's quite clean. Right, let's see if I can get him hoisted up. So I would say that this is one angry. <laughs> one angry male. He's got lovely orange to his tail. Gorgeous orange to his tail. And on his fins. He's not got an overmassive head. He's a nice fish. I'll turn it around the other side. say half six this morning and it took me all over the place. I had to jump in the water without my waders on. I just didn't have time for that. So I jumped straight in with all my clothes on. He's calmed me down a little bit now. He is. So yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. 
Turn this camera off now. Take a photo on my phone and then get him back. Wicked. Right, blog time people. Hope you can see me. Just thought I'd run you through my spot mix. Right. So in here, I've got hemp and pigeon conditioner. In here, and that's Bamford's. Bamford's. Uh, Bamford's top fly, it's got aniseed in it, it's the Dara one, but it's not expensive, it's £12, uh, no £11.50 that was for 20 kilos, and then also I've got hemp in there as well, so I soaked the hemp and the pigeon conditioner together for 24 hours, brought it to the boil and then I simmer it for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then I leave it for a day before I use it. So first off, I'll put some of that in there, put a couple of those in, juice as well, in fact now I'll put three in, alright, that's the pigeon conditioner, and you can see it. It's all just really gloopy, there's that many bits in it, it's a really good mix, really good mix. And then to that, I add a tin of the Old Faithful, a tin of yellow sweet corn, it's just cheap Tesco's one, uh, no sorry, Aldi one. And give that a mix in. Then couple of tins of mackerel in sunflower oil so I want all the oils as many oils in it as I can so I put all that in that's one tin and then another tin and mash them up get all that oil going in there as well so you've got all the glue off the pigeon conditioner in the hemp and all that mackerel is broke down. Sometimes you use tuna, sometimes sardines, sometimes mackerel. I don't think it really matters. Then I had a little bit of squid, liquid carp food. Don't go too mad with this because it's quite strong. Just put a little bit of that in there followed by a couple of glugs of the old faithful hemp from Tesco, £6 a bottle, don't go anywhere without it, put glugging of that in there as well, Oop. give that a mix round, get all that in there, then to that, one of the boilies that I use, carp tech, Spicy squid, really digestible. And if you go to downtown, you can get two kilos of these for nine pounds. If you go anywhere else, you'll pay uh, nine pounds for a kilo. And they're really dark, really dark brown boilers. Don't know if you can see that or not, but they're really digestible. Really good boiler. These are 15 millers. Put a handful of them in, and then I crumble a few. There's all different sizes and shapes in there. Like so. And 15 mil squid and spice boilers, brilliant boilers. Everywhere I fish with them, they work. And then the boilers, what I eat, they're a fish meal by the way. I only use them through the summer. Late spring, early summer. And these are my these are Crave, Crave Dynamites, Crave, 15 mm 
boilers, amazing boilers these, I use them all year round. I've had results with them for all species, they're just fantastic boilers. A couple of handfuls of them in. I don't bother chopping them, I just put them in, in chunks. I don't bother grinding them all. I reckon they just get, get towed away when you grind them all. Grind them if I'm doing them in PVA bags. Right, so that's some of them gone in there. So that's them. Give them a swish around. So they're starting to take the juice off. So, and then, in here, it's Vitalin. I think this 15 kilo bag, and it's 12 pound. Bag of this, a couple of bags of this last me all year. But what I do is I put brown crumb in it as well. So as well as it having Vitalin in it, it's also got uh, brown crumb in there as well. Fact. Couple of scoops of this in. I'll put three in. And this has just got all sorts in it. That many different flavours in the Viking. I don't understand why more people don't use it. And then mix all that in like so. And then what I have gone and forgot is water. Got to put some water in there as well. Just one second people. And some late water. Not too much, just a bit to loosen it up. And then I just leave that. And it's ready to use in a couple of hours. The first bucket that I do, I leave overnight, but as you can see, I don't know if it's picking that up. I love it, all them colours, different pieces, bits of everything in it, it's a really good mix, I use it everywhere, I do. Uh, and that's my spod mix, but that I'm only using down the right hand side on my right hand spot, I'm putting bait down on that, on my left hand spot, where I've had that common from, and them two bream, I'm just using boilers. I did start off with a bit of spot mix down there, but I kept getting bream down, I've got a couple of bream down that side, so I've just gone to boilers. Um, and then my boilers, they're in one of these bags, I always leave them in one of these crave bags, because it sweats, it makes them sweat. And inside here is 15 mil spicy squid dynamite boilers, 15 mil crave boilers and also dynamites tuna and anchovy boilers in 15 mil. Basically what I've done with these is I've put crave hydration fluid on them a couple of days ago and then what I've done then is I've two tablespoons of green lip muscle powder, and two tablespoons of liver powder and then I shake the bag all around Right, so, and you can see it all stuck to the side of the bag, and it basically coats all the boilers, rehydrates them, makes them really soft, and then if you can see, they're all really soft and sticky, and there's all bits in them, and they smell absolutely gorgeous, but I never mix those in with the spod mix, I always put my spod mix out, with them boilers what's in there, then these, I always put out separately because these give off a different oil scent going through the water different signals to what that does and I just think it gives you a 
bit of an edge, to be honest with you people. That's my spod mix and that's my boil is what I use. And then pop-ups, I use 15mm pop-ups and 12mm pop-ups. I'll give you, I'll do another video sometime and just run you through the pop-ups what I use. Tend to stick with most of the time. So, that's it. Right, better get this lot put away. Get my rods out of the water because it's about quarter to eleven. And take the dog for a walk. So, catch you in a bit people. Adios amigos.